So we're talking about funks, we're learning the language fundamentals, and then we're going to get into web dev, so we'll spend a couple of classes on language fundamentals. And now we're going to create another func, and, uh, and so to create another func, func foo, and then we can just have it print something. Hey, what's up? And then I could call foo. And these parentheses used to kind of be weird to me. Like, why? Why, did, why do I need the parentheses to execute? You know? And a function, you always have to, when you call a function, so the identifier is foo. And when you call the function, you need to have those parentheses to tell the program if there are any arguments that you're passing in. And uh, even if there are no arguments, you have to tell it that. So those prints are kind of, that's how a function executes. Now a function is just another type in Go. Go is all about type. And if we look at the language specification, we look at the different types. My index will pop up here in a second. The different types here in the language specification. A function is one of the types. An int is one of the types. It's under numeric. String is one of the types. So just, just like any other type, if we wanted to, we could do some cool things with it like assign it to another variable. So I'm going to run this and bring up my terminal and navigate to cd go source github goes to 11 golang web dev 000 and I'm in 63 go run main and foo is here, program about to exit, that raw string literal, and this is the entry point, beginning of the program. Okay, so that ran. That's cool. If I wanted to, just to show you a couple things about funks, I'm going to create another func. Why is it giving me an error, that red underline, on 18 and 22? I have two identifiers being declared with the same with the same identifier, right? I can't do that. So foo bar, and this one will have we'll pass something in to it. We're going to pass in a string, and then we'll use that string, and we'll return the string sprint line. And it's going to return a string. Sweet. And now we're going to call that one. And I'm going to put all this about to exit onto one line. Right? Within the raw string literal. Just clean it up a little bit. Now we'll call bar. And to call bar, we need to pass in a string. And then it's returning a string. So. I'm going to return, I don't know, assign it to n. That's a number, usually. I'll assign it to, I don't know, a. And I'm going to just clean this up here because now we could see, you know, sprint line and something being returned. So I'm going to bring that right here. And now I need to use a because if I have a variable and it's not used. Watch, as soon as I use it, watch that red underline under A disappear. You can't have a variable and not use it. Go says, what are you doing? That is code pollution. Code must be clean, readable, no unused variables, rookie programmer. <laughs> Like, put it in later, leave a comment, make a note, but don't have a variable there that's not used. It's only going to confuse people. There's a nice zen fierceness to the Go programming language. A nice, wonderful German engineering 
fierceness. <laughs> the right aspect right here. So I could run that. James Bond is Fu is here. James Bond is here. And take this space out right there because the comma includes the space. Program about to exit. And I have two sprint lines, so I'm just going to do sprint on this one and return a string without the carriage return. That's why I have two spaces between James Bond is here and about to exit. James Bond is here. Space didn't get put in. Little adjustments. There we go. We could go look at Sprint and see about that space. Sprint formats using the default formats for its operands and returns the resulting string. Spaces are added between operands when neither is a string. When neither is a string, spaces are added. And Sprint line, spaces are always added between operands and a new line is appended. We get to know what these different functions do. so that we can use them well. Let me see where this video is at. We are at 637. I like keeping these short. We will continue our exploration of functions in the next video.